In this video, I'm going to show how to insert a new relative sea level uh, data point inside the Wallis. What I did before uh, shooting this video is uh, I inserted all the references I need. Uh, you can have a, you can follow the tutorial um, in the playlist on YouTube, uh, and I inserted already uh, the U series and the amino acid ages I am going to use in this paper, uh, in this uh, record. Um, I am going to use uh, as a sea level indicator um, Camp de Tir, which is a, a classic last interglacial site in the Mediterranean. It has been recently measured and published by Lorscheid et al. In this paper, there are no age constraints, but age constraints are given by uh, Dan Muse in 2015 in a paper in paleogeography, paleoclimatology, and paleoecology by uh, Harty et al. in Quaternary Science Reviews from AAR Ages. And I'm not going to insert the data uh, on new series on mollusks this time, but I'm going to insert them later, uh, published by Claude Hilaire Marcel uh, in uh, Quaternary Science Reviews as well. So uh, I have all the ages already in the database. Now what I need to do is to put on the relative sea level data. So I go in here, I add a new one. As usual today, my connection is very slow. So I add the new one and I start putting in uh, what I need. So Camp de Tier is the name of the site. Uh, there are actually two different layers in this deposit. So what I'm, um, I wanted to show them here. So I'm going to set data on the deposit, which has been dated to MIS 5E up here. So upper beach deposit as subsite. The nation is Spain and the region is Balearic Islands. Okay, as a main reference, I'm going to insert Lorscheid et al., which is, because this is the reference from where I'm taking the sea level indicators from. But I want also to acknowledge RT et al. in QSR. News 2015 in Pete Paleo3, uh, Marcel in QSR, um, and um, there is also a paper by Butzer and Querda describing this um, this outcrop, which was, I suspect, the first one to describe this outcrop. So I want them to be acknowledged all year. Um, what I'm then putting in are the coordinates. Uh, just to give an idea of my setup, I have uh, the paper from Lorsha et al. on my iPad, and I'm looking at the data as I, uh, as I type them in. So the latitude is 39. 54, 2175. Uh, the longitude is 2.702049. Great. So uh, then we have a bunch of fields related to how the positioning technique has been obtained. Uh, in this case, uh, it's a differential GPS or coordinates in paper. So I'm going to select coordinates in paper. If you want to add new horizontal positioning techniques that might not be here, you can add it. Um, this record is a sea level indicator. In fact, this is from Lorscheid et al. I can actually see it here marked very clearly. Oops. Here marked very clearly as a vermated bench. So as a Vermated platform, so a sea level indicator embedded in a beach deposit. So sea level indicator, in this case, I can say that it's a beach deposit or a beach rock as a type of sea level indicator. If you're not satisfied of 
the uh, values that are in here. There's lots of values. You can search through them and see if there are uh, indicators that you that you want. Uh, you can uh, um, I can show this very briefly. You can edit and you can add new C level indicators uh, uh, if what you are looking for is not uh, there. Um, here I'm going to put some quick description beach deposits um, beach deposits may um, with pebbles and cobbles in stated by sh shallow water living permitted so because this is how the deposit has been described. Then I go to the second tab, elevation and paleo sea level. So uh, in this case, we're pretty lucky because uh, in Lorscheid et al, we have an indication of the upper and lower limit uh, of the indicative range, uh, zero minus 0 0.09 is the upper limit. This is and minus 1.5 is the lower limit. This is basically an indication of uh, the upper lower limits of the indicative range, in this case, the vermated, um, the vermated on these boulders and cobbles. And Lorscheid was measuring this uh, according to modern analog data. So he was looking at the modern shoreline and seeing where the vermated were um, growing, basically. Then we can select the sea level datum. Uh, here there are lots of sea level datums. Uh, usually uh, for other papers, we just have mean sea level general definition uh, or not uh, reported as well. In this case, I have to add a new one because uh, Lorscheid was measuring um, according to the, I'm searching it in the paper right now, to the uh, official Spanish geoid. EGM 2008 red map official Spanish geoid. Um, okay, the datum uncertainty, I am not really sure that they report it, uh, but they say that this is the best approximation of MISI level in, the, in Spain. So this is basically how you insert very quickly a new record. Now I can exit and I will find the sea level datum red map here so I can go on. How the elevation has been measured, I can go through the records and it was done with the differential GPS. Uh, I do not want to insert upper and lower elevation limits. Uh, here is uh, um, here there is the possibility to insert upper and lower elevations in case um, two elevations uh, are uh, given in the paper, maybe in the case of a pretty wide fatches, uh, vertically wide fatches in the field. So the elevation given by Lorscheid et al for this outcrop is 1.31 meters plus or minus 0 0.02. Here you can put notes on how the elevation has been derived or uncertainties in the elevation and indicative range, etc. So some general notes that you can put on. Um, here there's a bunch of um, values that are automatically calculated. So the reference water level, the indicative range, the paleo sea level and the sea level uncertainty. Uh, basically the formulas are the same. Uh, there are reported um, in uh, um, a paper we wrote in 2016 uh, uh, on trying to um, trying to use the approach of Shannon, uh, Horton, Anthony Long et al. Uh, that is using the Holocene also in the last interglacial. You see what's important, the policy level gets uh, calculated here, 2.10 plus or minus 0 0.70, which is exactly what is reported as well by uh, Lorshad et al. because they use the same um, uh, the same approach. Now we go to the age constraint part. Um, this is quite interesting because this is probably one of the best uh, dated sites um, in the Mediterranean and that I have found also in other places. On this site, 
we have several oops, amino acid racemization. So I can click on amino acid racemization. These are by Harty et al. 1987. And I can basically uh, select its CTC 1 and 2. I can select them from here. CTC 1 and CTC2. So these are the two amino acid racemization ages that there are for this one. Once we inserted the amino acid racemization ages, we can also insert the U series. I told you there is a paper by Dan Hughes et al. who reported quite a lot of uh, uh, ages that I already inserted. So basically I'm going to pick the U series here. The ages are equal to, we have also the possibility to insert minimum ages, MA1, MA4, MA5, MA6, MA7, oh, I should probably insert it, and MA10. Okay, so this is these are all the ages that we uh, that we have in Mallorca. Uh, there's also in Mallorca at this site they also um, put a stratigraphic constraints, which is uh, this one: um, Persistis strombur slatus or Senegalis fauna. Uh, with all these ages, it's probably not worth uh, putting it in, but I'm going to put it in because this is how the first authors have attributed this um, site to the last glacial, basically by saying that uh, um, uh, it contained uh, warm water fauna that is not found today in the Mediterranean. Uh, and of course, every one of these ones, I had to add them in the dating before I started this tutorial. The last but not least, we have the quality. Uh, now, the quality table uh, is a bit of a subjective way you judge the sea level indication in this record. Now, I evaluate this as being pretty high, both for the quality of sea level data, the measurement is done with GPS, uh, refer to a good datum. I could even give it a five because this is not done um, often. And the quality of age information is also pretty high. We have lots of independent, um, lots of independent um, constraints. Uh, so we, uh, we are fairly sure that this side is um, on the last integration. Uh, for this site is all. So I just gonna click on save and the site is saved in the database. I go in my maps now. I'm going to see that this site, I'm gonna check that this site is exactly where I want in Mallorca, nice and sunny place. Uh, if I check on my tables as well, I can then have a look at my site And I can also search it for here, site name. We said it's called Camp the Tier. Camp the Tier, there it is. I can look at the details and make sure that I inserted all the details correctly. Otherwise I can go back uh, to my record and make some edits and save them. So just a few, um, just a few um, ideas or just a few comments on all of this. Um, I found it pretty useful to, before starting to insert the relative sea level data for um, a number of sites, a cluster of sites, I usually insert the references before, then I insert all the um, datings uh, that, or the samples and datings I have available in that area. And only then I go to the uh, sea level, um, to the sea level part. Uh, to insert all this uh, data, uh, it took me, let's say, probably 15, 20 minutes, uh, but usually it takes, takes much less because uh, it's not usual that there are so many age constraints on 
uh, one single one single site. Usually it's just one or two U series ages or maybe one AAR or one stratigraphic constraint. Um, I haven't inserted yet in these records uh, all the U series ages uh, that Claude Hiller Marcel is reporting here. This is a big table. Uh, if you have big, big tables like uh, such as this one, uh, you can contact us. We can uh, uh, upload them in bunch. We can uh, send you an uh, Excel file and you will be able to put at least the ages in there. And then you're going to be able to select them uh, directly from the sea level, uh, from the sea level part. Sorry. Um, other than that, uh, I'm going to just have a quick uh, look at... Uh, another aspect which is might be interesting, which is the chronostratigraphy. So the chronostratigraphy is basically, uh, we put in the chronostratigraphy every uh, non-direct age constraint. Not sure why it's not loading. Yes, this is it. So you see that in the chronostratigraphy, I have, um, for example, terraces attributed uh, to the last interglacial, thanks to some uh, consideration, the Senegalese fauna in the Mediterranean, which has not been, uh, it, it has lots of indirect constraints to the last interglacial, uh, but it's common to many sites. So um, if there is a particular facies or a particular um, stratigraphic designation that in the region we are reviewing is related to the last interglacial, you can put it in here and it will be available to you in all the records. So every record will, will see this basically. Um, the other thing I wanted to say is that uh, we are compiling, thanks to some colleagues, um, two large databases of U series on corals in tropical areas and uh, U series on spellethems. So, if you have U series uh, uh, on these um, uh, materials in your area, you may want to wait until we announce that uh, this data is in the database. So, you will not have to insert uh, a large amount of U series uh, data. It will be already there and you will be able, you will be able to select them from uh, this age constraints tab in directly in the relative sea level, um, in the relative sea level um, uh, tab or form. Uh, we are doing the same more or less for luminescence and electrospin resonance, but if you have luminescence and ESR data, uh, please um, start inputting them because it will take a, a bit more to get to, uh, to the final uh, version of those databases and we will make sure to um, we will make sure that everything is uh, homogeneous in the end of the database. Last but not least, uh, uh, there might be age constraints of many different types and for this you have this other, table. So basically you can describe the age constraint and give it an age, uh, either a finite age or uh, a marine isotopic stage designation. So this was a bit of a longer video, uh, but this basically shows you how to put relative sea level data in the database. Um, please feel free to uh, get back to us with any comments or ideas on how to improve all this.